I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. Within hours of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing after the cargo ship crash, President Joe Biden pledged the federal government would take the lead on rebuilding it. The bridge is crucial not just for the state of Maryland or the port of Baltimore, but for the entire economy of the eastern seaboard. The bridge collapse was a disaster, and one core role of the federal government is to backstop after disasters. At least one Republican is already balking at the idea of using federal funds to rebuild this important piece of infrastructure. Is Congress going to need to pony up more money, or is there enough money in the infrastructure package? Yeah. Great, great to be with you, uh, Maria. Yeah, it was kind of outrageous immediately for Biden uh, to uh, express in this tragedy the idea that he's going to use federal funds to pay for the it in entirety. It's become standard for a certain type of Republican, unfortunately, like podcaster Ted Cruz, voting against emergency relief after Superstorm Standy only to come hat in hand to claim federal money for Texas after Hurricane Harvey even ran an ad about how much money he got. And again for the power grid disaster. And in 2020, during the height of the COVID emergency, Donald Trump boasted about not providing to support to governors who didn't support him. Now with this enormous disaster in Baltimore, we're once again seeing the MAGA vision of governance in action, which is you only get government services if you support Donald Trump and screw you if you don't. Joining me now, Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it's great to have you on the program. First, just I wanted to get a kind of brief from you on where things stand in the aftermath of this disaster in terms of knowing what caused it and what the first next few steps look like. Thanks. Well, the NTSB is leading the investigation in partnership with the Coast Guard and a number of agencies that are involved. They're going through the black box, uh, looking at everything that could be relevant to understanding the causes. They work independently from us by design, but we're doing everything we can to help in their effort. In the meantime, our focus really is, uh, as a department, is making sure we prepare for what's next. That means uh, getting that bridge rebuilt and dealing with all of the traffic disruptions until it is getting the port reopened and dealing with all of the supply chain disruptions until that happens. Uh, right now, there are three heavy lift vessels on their way to the site uh, that should begin arriving tomorrow, and the last of them should be in place uh, a couple of days after that. To begin with that process of getting the, the wreckage cleared, you got to understand that that passage that is blocked by the ship and the, and, and the bridge there, uh, that is the only channel in to most of the port of Baltimore, which uh. is, of course, a very important port for the East Coast. So uh, uh, that's why we've got to make sure that we get uh, that that cleared uh, in a safe and responsible way so that the port can get back up and running. Then there's the longer term effort of making sure the bridge can get back up. Uh, just uh, hours ago, we released the first $60 million of federal funding to help with that through our emergency relief program. Uh, there's, I'm sure, going to be much more where that came from. Everything it takes, as the president said, to help everyone in Baltimore get back to normal. So, so clearing that ship, which is still in that channel, that's the channel that, that creates passage in and out of the, the port to get the port active again. Uh, that, that's sort of priority number one right now. Uh, the $60 million in, in quick release emergency relief funds um, that, that got announced, I guess there's a sort of pot of money for the immediate aftermath of disasters. And then in terms of the, the actual transportation logistics here, I mean, it, it, it strikes me as an enormous problem, right, to not have that bridge in terms of hazardous materials, in terms of flow from the port as well. Do you have a game plan for how to deal with that? Yeah, we've been working side by side with the Maryland DOT uh, under the leadership of Governor Wes Moore as they have been uh, putting together their plans to do the design and the procurement for the new bridge uh, and everything it takes to get that port back up and running. As you noted, this is an important thoroughfare. About 30,000 vehicles a day counted on that bridge. There are alternatives, uh, uh, 95 and 895, but those are both tunnels, which are uh, not suitable for hazardous material uh, transportation, at least uh, most of the time. Uh, part of what makes this 
complicated in the meantime. But these are some of the things that uh, uh, that the funds can help with, and certainly in terms of clearing that channel. Uh, these funds can go to demolition, debris removal. Uh, they can go to uh, uh, supporting some of the costs associated with detours, as well as the early spending on that design and procurement uh, of a new bridge. And believe it or not, even though the original bridge took uh, five years to uh, uh, to construct, uh, they have already had meetings uh, and sessions uh, beginning yesterday to launch the procurement and design process to get it back up. Okay, so that was my next question. I mean, just looking at that bridge, that looks like an expensive, difficult to build bridge. I know nothing about bridges, but just my, my amateur eye, uh, it's a long expanse. It also has to be built so that ships can pass in and out underneath it. Um, it this is a non-trivial undertaking. What, like, how, how, what's the timeline and the cost like? And, and are you worried at all from the, the words we heard from the, the Republican congressman today that this House Republican majority is not going to be interested in providing the funding? This really needs to be a bipartisan priority, and anybody who, who views it as otherwise, I'm hoping they will reconsider because uh, it could be your district that is the next one to be struck by tragedy, and we always do better when America comes together. Uh, let me give you one example uh, of a situation that happened in the past. In 2007, uh, many were killed and injured when uh, I-35 bridge collapsed in Minnesota. Uh, that was uh, not because of a, a ship strike or, or, or a truck strike in that case. It, uh, it wasn't going uh, uh, over the, the, the bay the way the, the bridge in Baltimore is. But uh, what it had in common was a, a sudden and catastrophic collapse. In the end, about $260 million of federal funds were brought together. Uh, and uh, that is something that, that really passed very quickly and rather easily in that Congress. Uh, I would like to believe we can get that done now, too. To be clear, uh, things like the $60 million we put forward today, we've already got that funding because it was authorized in President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure plan uh, that passed back in 2021. But it, it's certainly the case that more funding uh, might be needed. And again, this really shouldn't be uh, partisan in the least. Uh, getting just, just like the uh, you know original uh, uh, bipartisan infrastructure law was bipartisan. We didn't have all Republicans uh, with us, of course, but a number of Republicans crossed the aisle to work with President Biden, work with Democrats and get that done because there's nothing partisan about a road or a bridge. Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg, thank you so much for your time tonight. Appreciate it, sir. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.